third graders. Today we're going to learn about an art movement called pop art, and we'll learn about an American pop artist named Robert Indiana. Afterwards, we're going to make our own collage in the style of Robert Indiana using either the word love or another positive four-letter word of our choice. Now my example used paper that I painted with watercolor ahead of time. You can do that too if you have watercolor, or you can use construction paper or color your paper with crayons. Okay, let's get started. Pop art is an art movement that began in New York in the 1950s. Pop artists were interested in the commonplace things that we see all around us. Pop art is known for being bold, bright, and eye-catching. One of the most famous pop artists was Andy Warhol, who was known for his artwork of advertisements and celebrities. Another famous artist was Roy Lichtenstein, who created artwork to look like comics. The pop artist we're learning about today is Robert Indiana. He was born in 1928 in Newcastle, Indiana, and he credits his first grade teacher with inspiring him to become an artist. He joined the Air Force as a young man, and after his service, he attended art school and moved to an artist colony in New York. He became very well known for his paintings and sculptures of words and numbers. His love print was originally chosen to be a Christmas card for the Museum of Modern Art. He later turned it into a sculpture. We will create our own word collage inspired by Robert Indiana. Okay, third graders, you're going to need two or three colors of construction paper. You'll need scissors, glue stick, and a pencil. So the first thing you need to do is turn your construction paper into squares. I'm going to do them both at the same time to make it go a little faster. So I'm going to stack them together. Take one corner and bend it over to make a triangle. And I'll give it a slight crease, but I don't need to mash it. I just want it to kind of stay in place. I'm going to pick it up, take my scissors, and cut along this line so that this extra paper comes off. my two squares. I'm going to fold them in half, make a rectangle, give it a good crease, fold them in half to make a little square, give it a good crease, and open it back up. Now, I need to decide which of these is going to be the background and which one of these is going to be the letters. I think I want a blue background with red letters. So I'm going to leave the blue down here and I'm going to cut the red into four parts. So I'm going to go straight up the middle along the crease. You can ignore the diagonal crease from before. It was just there to help us make it into a square. Cut that in half and cut that in half. Now don't worry if they're not perfect. It's not like origami. Okay, so now I have my four red squares. So I'm going to do love again, but you can think of any positive four letter word you want, such as kind or good or hope or heal. Um, and I'm going to draw out my letters ahead of time. If you are really comfortable with scissors and you feel like you can just cut out the letter without drawing it first, by all means feel free. But I wanna draw them just so that you can get a sense of how to make sure they're big enough. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is work with the edges of the paper so that the straight side of my L is already made up by the edge of the paper. Here's what, what we're not gonna do. Don't draw a sad, pitiful little L right in the middle of your paper like that. First of all, it's just too little. But second of all, 
why do the extra work of cutting into the center of this and cutting all those sides when we can use the edge that's already there? So make sure if you have a letter with straight sides, like an L or an E, that you're using those sides to your advantage. So I've got my L and I wanna tilt my O like how Robert Indiana tilted his O. So I'm gonna draw it at an angle like that. And I'm not gonna worry about the middle of the O just yet. I'm gonna stretch my V from the top to the bottom. And for my E, again, I'm going to take advantage of the left side and the bottom and the top. Okay, and now I'm ready to cut those out. And when I cut, I'm going to try to go inside the pencil line a little bit so that it doesn't show up on my finished collage, just to help it look a little bit neater. Now, for the circle in the middle of my O, I'm gonna choose a scrap of a different colored paper. I found a yellow scrap from my earlier example. And I'm just gonna cut out a little oval to put right in the middle there. I'm not even gonna draw it first. to fill in the middle of my V right here. Now all that's left is to glue them down onto my blue background paper. Okay, roll your glue stick all the way down, cap it tight. I'm going to flip mine over and just smooth the back of it. I like to flip it over so that I don't accidentally move the collage paper around while I rub, just to help it stay flat. Okay, now I'm going to turn this over, let it dry, and we're all set. Hope you had fun and we'll have another art project next week. Bye guys.